today, as you know, marks exactly one year since the Marikana massacre. 19 years since South Africa's first democratic elections. There have been discussions about whether the country is truly a democratic state or just a post apartheid state. Let's chat now to activist Zeki Ahmad. Zeki, very good morning to you and thank you very much for joining us from our Cape Town uh, studios. Yes, we know South Africa is a democratic constitution, but for many South Africans, and particularly some of us who lived through the 76 event and maybe even the 1960 Sharpeville massacre, thought we'd never see live ammunition being used by police in a democratic state. What could possibly we learn from the Marikana tragedy? Uh, good morning, Dan. It is, it, it is indeed a very, very sad day. It's sad that the miners who have been injured, the miners who have died, that they have not received justice yet, that no one's been arrested. Everyone in South Africa, everyone in South Africa is going to pay in one way or another for this deep injustice that our state and the mining company Lonman inflicted on the people of Marikana and the miners. Um, we all, like you said, no one thought it would ever happen again. But the truth is, if we look at our South African police service, it has become a law unto itself. Last year alone, uh, or the year before, between 2012-2013, 720 people died in police custody. Now, the fact is that our police act unlawlessly, they, uh, the, our police act lawlessly. They have no control. Their command uh, often uh, does not have the skill to support them. And largely, our country has to ask the question. In 1994, we signed the Constitution. We have to ask our question. Have we averted a civil war or have we postponed it? And the question for me is, one that remains out and remains to be answered. We have an incipient civil war in the way that poor people fight poor people, whether it's xenophobic violence, whether it's the violence between workers because their unions do not represent them properly. These are difficult, difficult things that our country is not facing. Zaki, uh, these are very huge challenges you've mentioned earlier. We were talking here, my colleague Ayanda was talking to Professor Pitikantula, historian, and he said it's like in South Africa today, we are all living inside a bleeding wound. Yes, we have a wonderfully crafted constitution. We've taken some actions like the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to move forward as a country. What would you think would need to happen then to address all this for us to come together as, as a nation and move forward? Well, the first thing I think that's critical is serious analysis of what the problem is. And the problem is that we have a, an economy that is largely unequal locally and globally, and that needs to be addressed. But understanding that and understanding it in the South African context is one thing. We need large numbers of active citizens, citizens like the people in the Social Justice Coalition who are organizing for safe sanitation, who are trying to organize a commission of inquiry into the Kailicha police, who basically allow gangsters to murder and stand by sometimes laughing um, and sometimes rob Somali traders themselves. So you need activists and you need communities to organize. We have seen huge protests. These protests have sometimes ended in violence. And a public order policing study said two things. It said w the, f the first thing it said was that mayors and, and other political officials interfere with public order policing. They politicize it. Second, they deny permission when they have no right to deny permission to marches. And that often leads to violence. And they are put in the front line of having to address demonstrators or deal with demonstrators, and then other units come in to shoot at demonstrators. So the difficulty we face is that our police uh, uh, is, at the moment, simply defending the class interests of the capitalists at the one end, whether it's lawnmen and so on, or on the other hand, they, f they defend the party interests of mayors who are not delivering of party officials who are not delivering, and that we cannot allow that to continue. Zaki, you mentioned the police and how they are behaving. One of the issues that has come up, which we've had before and very briefly, has been the issue that when 
it, it came to democracy in 94, the police were sort of demilitarized and they became a service, South African police service, not a force. But recently we've seen the use again of military titles and, and, and status for, for the police. And I mean, we saw in Marikana the deadly fatal use of live ammunition. Very briefly, how can, how can we move? I mean, should we go back to a demilitarized uh, SAPS? Uh, Dan, the Commission of Inquiry, the Oregon Piccoli Commission of Inquiry into Kailiche is precisely to look at this sort of things. Demilitarization, yes, but there also needs to be a professional, ethical and official, efficient command structure. And that includes the commissioners, the station commanders, the cluster commanders and so on. And at the moment, we do not have that. Yesterday we read that uh, over a, a one th nearly 1,500 mainly senior police officers are criminals uh, and they're in our police force. So the critical question is we have to start at the top. Management of SAPS, it has to be demilitarized, but we have to have professional, ethical, efficient South African police service. Thank you very much, Zaki. We're going to have to leave you there. That's activist Zaki Ahmad giving us some of his views around how we could move forward post the Marikana tragedy. Thank you for joining us. News that moves. ENCA.com.